I think that may be some of the reason that when people are here um, alone and there's wind, you hear that shaking and you might think, uh-oh, someone in the building. So, so that's why <laughs> there may be more of the stories of <laughs> yeah. It's Haunted, but yeah. I think some of it can be explained away and probably some cannot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside. Today we are international. We have traveled to the United States of America. We are in Plattsburgh, New York, and joining me is Mary from Valcor Brewing Company. Good morning, um, and thank you for coming. I know this was a long time coming. 27 <laughs> months we were scheduled and the border closed, and uh, we finally uh, were yeah. able to do this. Yeah, this thank you uh, for uh, taking the time with us. Yeah, the world being on fire the last two years has been interesting. So. Uh, I'm so happy we finally get to interview you and get this. And I've been a fan of this place ever since I discovered it in about 2017. Yes. So it's uh, it's usually one of my places I come to. Uh, just your food menu alone, which we'll speak about after, is this is one of the draws for me whenever I'm doing my cheap shopping as a Canadian, <laughs> as a Quebecer, and I come down and do this. Uh, you yeah. brought me out some great looking beers here to try. What am I starting with today? Um, the first beer is our Lakeside Lager. That mm -hmm. was one that we did home brew. Okay. Um, we initially, it was called Leo's Lakeside. Um, be, it was named after my dad, who was okay. a dairy owner. Well, actually the Plattsburgh Dairy. So we always joked that we went from milk to beer. And <laughs> so uh, that um, has been tweaked though mm -hmm. by our brewer, uh, Vinnie Thompson, who's amazing. and. Um, He's got a couple of, as you see, um, gold metal, metal beers. Yeah. And so uh, um, it's light, crisp. If you are a light beer drinker, um, say a Coors mm -hmm. or a Miller or something like that, this would be the beer that you would want to start with. Nothing better than a nice clean lager to start the day. That's right. Awesome. Uh, well, unfortunately, you don't have a drink, but uh, toast, as we <laughs> do. So. Super light, crushable. Like, to me, uh, usually when I come here, it's either the Reuben or the Wings, and this just, it always matches whatever yes. meal I personally had here, so. Mm. Wow, such a good beer. And still, like, nice, consistent, no, like, crazy hoppiness. The malt build is, is right there, nice and crispy. It's, that's, you know, some people just call it a summer beer. To me, this is an anytime beer. It's an anytime so. beer, yes. Yeah, awesome. If you're uh, out on the golf course and you know you're going to be <laughs> having a couple, that's probably the beer yeah. you want to go with. Just make sure you have your designated driver with you. Exactly. <laughs> so. So. Amazing. Uh, so what's what's the brewery story? I mean, military barracks from the 1800s into a brewery. Where, where does that all begin? Well, um, my late husband and I, um, we were home brewers. And then um, we wanted to come back up. This is where I'm originally from. Both of us were in the military. Uh -huh. um, we had uh, three acres down further um, on Lake Champlain and went through all of the... Um, permitting and the rest to actually build a post and bean brewery down there, which is partial for the name because it is in Val, it was in Valcor, mm -hmm. right across from Valcor Island. And both being history buffs, um, we, uh, with the Battle of um, Valcor and the rest, which really was turning for uh, the U.S., Benedict Arnold actually was um, very instrumental for the U.S., um, that's why we have our double IPA is Big Ben, named after him. And uh, so we did the ship's wheel with the V, Valcor. Well, we were out on a run, came by, and this building was for sale. We were like, hmm, instead of starting new, let's see if um, we could potentially buy this, renovate it, and have it um, right here. Yeah. So uh, we went through, of course, the planning board, the um, zoning board, went through all of that. Um, there had been a group, they're still in existence, friends of the Old Stone Barracks, who had actually put a retainer down to hold this. They had six months, but they had not raised enough of the money to buy it, but they were very anxious for someone who could come in and, mm -hmm. and do the renovation. Um, so we worked with them, and actually, if you do come visit, you will see on the walking path there, um, the friends have put in these beautiful signs 
um, that tell the whole history of the barracks up through the purchase, brewery, and also, you know, what the, the base itself mm -hmm. with the plains and the old cemetery. Um, so you get a little history tour as you're coming in as well. Uh, so we um, purchased it in November of 2014. Okay. And then we started renovation ourselves. Um, all the uh, windows and the boards, you know, had to come down and then redo all the electricity and, you know, of course, the plumbing and <laughs> all of that. So uh, we did the renovation, then actually got the on site to, you know, we did the deconstruction mm -hmm. and then um, had. Um, Bola Construction, um, TNT, um, and a couple of other local, which was interesting. We had a number of larger companies that wanted to bid on the project and the rest. We decided to stay local, so we had a number of the local. Um, Casey Electric, all of them, you know, three, four man teams, mm -hmm. but um, they all had their specialties. We were very lucky, um, Steve Bola, who did all of the window casings, took every door as a different side. <laughs> he had to build them on site at his shop, measure them, then bring them back. Um, and uh, he was not in the area at the time. He came back to work the project and he is still keeping this building going. Um, and, and that basically was it. We did a soft opening, even though we didn't have our full brew house mm -hmm. um, in January of 20. 16 and then um full opening was in july of uh, 2016. yeah because it does say on the sign there you know barracks old stone barracks yes, established, established 2015. 20, so. i know i looked up there after yeah. i was like hmm yeah. and um that's basically when we got our permitting was in okay to to get that started yeah. so and uh, i mean clearly with the pandemic and everything because plattsburgh i can only assume is a heavy tourist town and losing you know, the Canadian dollar's a little weaker, but just losing that Canadian dollar coming in. Exactly. You're like, oh, we need our locals more so than ever, and you supporting the local electrician company and, and the local construction guys. And like, that's what the show is about, is about supporting local businesses. Right. And that's the most important thing is like, yes, people aren't gonna lie, you're still gonna have to buy stuff from overseas, but try and purchase as much local and support local as you can. Right. I mean, even though, um Yes, some overseas, but um, this bar, all of the wood and the rest, um, that came from a local lumber mm -hmm. um, company. Um, and then even our brew house and our tanks and the rest are um, Prospero, which is from uh, Springfield, New York. So okay. we did not buy our tanks. Many of them will mm -hmm. buy them from China or different areas that um, have been in the business of doing it. Prospero um, really started out as wine yeah. and then with the um, big uh, beer explosion yeah. they started doing the brew houses for, um, for beer and we were very lucky and they are awesome with support that's why I said also our brewer who is not able to be here today mm -hmm. He is out in Syracuse um, doing a collaboration with another brewery who also has the same system of the Prospero system. So, um, Yeah, we also had a, a brewery in, uh, it's called Saint-Jacques, Quebec, and they had a local guy come in uh, and do their brew house. They're called uh, the Apothecary, or L'Apothecary in, yeah. in French. So, And it's the same thing as like they want to support local, but some guys realize like if I want my stuff now, I just got to get it from overseas. So That's true. And that's why it took us a little, uh, we did have a pilot system, mm -hmm. so we brewed a bunch um, and we thought, oh, we'll do a soft opening and we'll have it through the weekends. Um, that first Friday, Saturday, we were out of beer. And so interestingly, so that we did not close down in the rest, since we are a farm brewery, uh, we were able to get beers from other farm breweries. So mm -hmm. Paradox, which is down near the Saratoga mm -hmm. area, it's not quite that far. Um, Paradox, um, Plattsburgh Brewing Company, and some of the other, um, also Osable, um, they allowed us to promote their beers here so that awesome. people still got the idea of being able to come in rather than, oh, they had it for one day and they're closed. And yeah. so we featured other breweries' beers uh, while we 
brewed some more. So it worked out very well. And uh, I have to say, um, it, it's great working with the local breweries here. They're, they're all excellent. Yeah. And uh, no, it's, it's so important that even more so now with the last two years that you got We got to help each other. Like, yeah. I thought maybe pandemic was time for us to give up all of our hate towards each other and, and let's find some love. But Unfortunately, it didn't quite work as, as my jaded right. mind thought so. Right. <laughs> so. Well, it, it kept the love between brewers. I yeah. have to say yeah. that because uh, when one was, you know, we had a hard time either getting kegs or our keg washer. Mm -hmm. Jesse o at Oval Brewing um, was phenomenal and said, here, use these. Come on over, clean your kegs. Yeah. So um, we knew that we did have to depend on each other. And I hope that they feel we were as gracious as mm -hmm. all the others were yeah. to us. So. No, it's, we've heard it now from you, from multiple other bruises. If it weren't for us supporting each other, you know, oh, I'm at a crystal malt. Oh, I'm at a this. Hey, can you bring it over? Right. It's, yeah. it, it keeps this, this night tight, nice tight circle and, and people like myself who love hearing these stories. And that's why we do this show is we love hearing you talk about friends in the area and things like that, which we'll get to later. But it's, uh, it's so important that you guys support, uh, that you guys and girls support each other and keep this going. So. Right. Yeah. And we're also very lucky that uh, Country Malt is just up in Champlain. Mm -hmm. So they're very receptive. If we've got a quick turn, oh my gosh, um, if they've got it there in stock. And they're also very good because as a farm brewery, you have to have a certain percentage of New York State grown, you know, your grains mm -hmm. or, or the rest. Um, they also now, being able to support that, they have um, contracted with a lot of New York State um, malteries and, and the rest so that we can keep our beer and keep our farm license. Very cool. Uh, so Valcor, like you said, you're from the Valcor region, uh, but why name it Valcor Brewing Company and not Old Stone Barracks Brewing or, or anything like that? Like why stick with the Valcor? We had already um, patented or not, you know, got the copyright mm -hmm. on the logo. Um, we had actually, if you see, there are still some people who have Valcor Brewing Peru because it was down in Peru, New York, right okay. across. Um, and, uh, we just liked that that history, so um, we didn't change it to Old Stone Barracks, but um, it is Valcor Brewing at the Old Stone Barracks, which is on the historic registry. Mm -hmm. So um, you can look that up as well for the history and and the rest. So, so obviously you already mentioned some roadblocks. Just this being a historical building alone, um, first of all, some difficulties just of what you were allowed to do, and obviously. There's certain legalities that you have to follow with a historical building. Um, just, I guess, running in power. You mentioned earlier pre-show, the copper nails. It's, I want to hear that story as well. Uh, and just was the town of Plattsburgh welcoming for a brewery? They were. Okay. Yep. The town was very welcoming. However, they knew that um, they did not want to lose the you know historical nature mm -hmm. of this. Um, we worked very closely, like I said, with Plattsburgh, both the town, the city. Um, and State Historic Preservation Office, SHPO. Um, so there were a lot of guidelines that we had to keep the integrity of the outside and to include the colors of the porches, you know, all of that, um, which we wanted to keep that anyway. Um, the interior, not so much. It was our choice okay. um, to make it look more rustic, like someplace that you would find in this type of building. Um, rather than say more modern, um, the metal mm -hmm. and we kept the wood we wanted to. And of course we did it on that side because mm -hmm. that is the sun, you know, and it warms the stone, keep as much of the stone to show what the, the hard work that, um, went into building this building. It had started down at that end and they would go and that's why you will see different fireplaces. Mm -hmm. They'd go so far. They'd close it up, they'd have their fireplaces there, and then the next, after the winter, would build another. Um, interestingly enough, that was not supposed to be the very end. Okay. There was supposed to be another 10 to 20 feet, and they gave up. They said, this, this is enough. And so, so even when you see some of the, you know, before we closed off, upstairs you would see there was this extra um, <laughs> bit before that that they had done the temporary close. So. I mean, even pre-show, like when you were showing us around the area, I'm so amazed with how huge this location is. It's so deceiving because from the outside, yeah, it looks big, but not, it doesn't feel as big from the outside as it does when, when you're downstairs through, and your storage yes. and stuff. It's, it's yeah. gigantic. It's crazy. So... so. 
And we kept now, we had to replace all the panes, but we still have the original windows and did some of the casings so you can still mm -hmm. see with the rope and the, um, the weights yeah. for that. I think that may be some of the reason that when people are here um, alone and there's wind, you hear that shaking and you might think, uh-oh, someone in the building. So, so that's why <laughs> there may be more of the stories of <laughs> yeah. it's haunted, but yeah. I think some of it can be explained away and probably some cannot. Well, I mean, you're talking military barracks from the 1800s. That's the right. amount of stuff that's come through and then for sure people passed away in this building and they do say like energy just never disappears it, it becomes something else so who knows that's if right. some and, and old there generals are... sitting around drinking some beers at night so. well if it is haunted they are all friendly ghosts that's... and i think they are very happy that we turn this place into a brewery yeah. something they could enjoy so and it's an inn as well so it is there are seven guest rooms um and so that's more where people are like, ah, oh, I was in room five and I heard, <laughs> but they said, but it was all good. <laughs> so, well, that, that's good. So That's awesome. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I love hearing this kind of stuff. You know, the history of the breweries. It's like, oh, you know, it's old stone military barracks from the 1800s. Who knows what happened well, here? That's right. So, so. That's wild. Uh, what's beer number two I'm going to be trying here? That is the blueberry lager. Okay. So... The base is our Lakeside Lager. Mm -hmm. um, this one's a blueberry that we do keep throughout the year because a lot of people really like it. Um, but seasonally, we've also, um, and we may have it for the Brew Force, which is next weekend. It's an annual event um, that um, is in support of Lagarda. So all of the proceeds and the rest, all the breweries, some wineries and the rest, they come and it's on the front part of the, uh, the property and it supports for um, families of fallen officers. Okay. And so, um, like I said, this year it's next week, but we do have one annually yeah. and we will be bringing out the strawberry rhubarb. Ooh. Sorry it's not on tap right That's... now, but that <laughs> is one that we um, get a calling for regularly at the booth Forest. Uh, as we do toast. Okay. Oh yeah. The blueberries, it's not like a punch in the mouth of blueberry. It's so well balanced. Yes. Mm. And like you said, you've, you and, and the brewer have just constantly been tweaking it and bringing it up and down. So it's just, it's so good. The brewer tweaks it. I taste it and mm -hmm. say, yes, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as much as the tweaker on that end. Yeah. But, uh... it, it's, you know, speaking with former, uh, say, uh, a current sales representative at a brewery, craft brewery in Ontario, he's like, science is hard. I'm like, yes, science is hard. Yes. And that's why I'll just talk about it and drink it and enjoy it and support local companies like this when I can, when I'm here. You know, every time I do my shopping at Plattsburgh, it's like, oh, it's lunchtime. Let's go to, let's go to Valcorn. It's right there. So. Yeah. Well, that's well, good. I appreciate so. the. Yeah. The patronage. No, it, it easily, plus knowing a former employee of yours as well through old family friends, it's like, oh, well, you know, I'm helping them as well. She was going to uh, university here at the time. So right. it's like, okay, that's cool because I'm also helping her pay her university Is bills, it? which well, that's right. even in Canada, they're not that cheap. And here in America, they're even more expensive. So. Right. Yeah, we do get um, a lot of mm, um, so good. the people from the college yeah. that are taking classes and working here part time. We also have some that have graduated. Um, they've either gone on to whatever other career, mm -hmm. but if they're back in the summer, they will stop by. And sometimes they, if they're teachers, they're like, we'll take some shifts. <laughs> and uh, so that's good. Uh, so what was the first beer that ever came out of Valcor? Uh, this, or actually Valcor as, as a brand? Our real flagship is the Copper Nails. Okay. Um, that was one that we had perfected, and that pretty much has stayed the same recipe that we had originally from home brewing. It originally, it's an amber ale, and um, we had thought about gaslight, but then as we were doing all of the, and that's what originally it had mm -hmm. been on the um, recipe sheets that we had. But after working in here and pulling, as you can see, all of these different um, boards where you would hang things oh, yeah. on the lap there, Pulling out the number of copper nails that we pulled out, we said, no, we're calling it copper nails. <laughs> and so uh, that, um, that truly is the flagship. And you will taste that after. You may, instead of you mm -hmm. know, having it prior to, 
This is a um, seasonal sour, okay. and a lot of times if you have a sour before you would have a regular amber mm -hmm. ale, it's going to tweak yeah, the so palate. So I would say when you take your next one, <laughs> I would say the copper nails is the one before your sour. Yeah, we'll definitely do the copper next. Yes. That's awesome. Uh, speaking of, of kind of your flights, super unique, the metal. I, I was interested in purchasing it, except I didn't have the cash, unfortunately, on me at the time. And I understand they're from recycled airplanes. Is that true? Right. No, they okay. are not. Um, so my late husband, prior to, um, he was in the military, mm -hmm. but he also owned uh, the company, it was called Tigmaster okay. in Michigan, um, Tungsten Inert Gas. So they did all of this metal for, you know, different cities and the rest. And it's the laser cut okay. and bending in the rest. So, you know, you'd gone to other places and he noticed that many times it was tough when you would pick them up, mm -hmm. so why not have a handle? Um, the other thing is you'll see the little grooves yep. in here so that they didn't get stuck. Mm -hmm. So when you pick it up and it's an easy serve, yeah. and then you could actually see, we could put the uh, laser cut of yeah. the, um, the valve cork. Okay. Because somebody had told me that if from the old retired military jets is you'd recycled the metal and that's what they were from. That Obviously that was... A false information right. but yeah uh, it's it's they're well, still super unique so. right and the thing is the way it is and it even almost looks like a propeller mm -hmm. from one of the planes yeah but um it did not come from that okay. recycled metal so. um i know I, I don't know how old it is but there's a new york state brewery app yes uh is that do you find that helps at all as people discovering from out of town they're they're in blacksburg and they're like hey what's this uh, place? yes okay yes it does we have been um obviously it was not so much uh, during the pandemic, yeah. um, on the beer trail. And mm -hmm. it's beer and wines throughout New York yeah. State and the rest, so. And it is helpful. People will say, oh, didn't even know this place existed, so. Yeah. And oh. even though we constantly are trying to keep up on our social media pages, um, a lot of times it will automatically switch it from here down. To Peru. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or people will end up over at, um, at Oval. At Oval. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But um, Jesse's always good. He's like, oh, come on and have a beer, but it's over there if you're looking for lunch or whatever. So. I mean, speaking of that, friends in the area. So I come here, I discover you guys, I try a lineup of beers, I grab a meal, work. Where else do you suggest I go next? And we always say, oh, if you are staying right here mm -hmm. or you're on the way, Oval is less than a half mile walk. Yeah. And they've got a very unique um, building as well. It's the old fire station. Mm -hmm. So um, it's always great to go in, talk to Jesse. Um, I many times, if I am swinging back, either from Maple Field or the rest, I'll swing and have a beer because I love their beers as well. Yeah. And anybody else you suggest in a, in a driving distance? You already mentioned Osable. Osable, uh, yes. Uh, um, the uh, Badger Brothers are wonderful. Um, actually, before we got started we went out they were just renovating and getting up mm -hmm. and going they let us taste some of their beers and um, uh, kind of helped us along with uh, the process of filling out for the farm brewer license because it was new to us and so um, they were very helpful um, it's pretty huge names and uh, the canning uh, you guys didn't have last time I was here but last time we were supposed to do this as you mentioned 27 months ago yes. um, you didn't have canning now you have canning uh, names, labels, who comes up with that creativity stuff? A lot of them were from before, but we do try and keep some of a historic nature. Mm -hmm. As you'll see, McDonough's Broadside, yep. Big Ben, um, then Downey's Demise, um, the Loggers, and some of our seasonal. Vinny, based on the brew and what the actual ingredients are the rest, mm -hmm. he is um, the one that usually will come up with the names to match the beers. Um, he also works very closely. Her name is Maggie, and I'm not sure her last name. <laughs> That's fine. Um, but she works with him to actually do the artwork. Okay, She's cool. fantastic. And um, then, uh, like I said, we just purchased, um, rather than the laborious canning we were doing one at a time, we now have an automatic canner. So um, we're able to put out a lot more. These are some that are canned currently, mm -hmm. um, but we do have others that uh, are seasonal that we do can, so. So yeah, you've already mentioned you've done a few collabs, Overcraft, Osable, you got one coming out of Syracuse. Uh, 
any other ones that are like, did you use a local coffee maker to make your stout or, or any, but anything like that, or any other breweries that you've done collabs with and then dream collabs of the future? We have also with living goods, you know, mm -hmm. all of the locals, we have done that. Um, Vinny has been working with different, um, places. Um, yes, with coffee, or, or whenever we can get some of the local products, um, say from one of the orchards if we need, or mm -hmm. if we can do whatever we can to support local, we get our products here, um, then the others we go through a distributor. Do, do you, and now clearly Vinny is your brewer, but you yourself, if you could suggest to Vinny, uh, somebody in Vermont or, oh, we're gonna go down to Florida or California, like any dream breweries you'd love to do a collab with? Um, I think one that I would really love to do a collab with, and it's probably because the reason we thought of opening a brewery um, is Blue Mountain Brewery okay. in Afton, Virginia, um, because we were you know, living mm -hmm. in the Charlottesville area. Um, their um, business model, um, the husband and wife that own it, um, and you should go online and look at it. If you are traveling through the Charlottesville or the, the Blue Mountains, um, Blue Mountain Brewery mm -hmm. is phenomenal. And they are just very nice, fun people. And I think Vinny would thoroughly enjoy <laughs> um, doing a collab with them. Uh, so, I mean, if you're ever in Virginia, they would be one to put on your, uh, your show because um, they truly are. <laughs> I mean, I know last thing I read, there's close to 4,000 craft breweries in the U.S. now. Um, where we are between Quebec and Ontario, there's almost uh, 800. It's Yeah, we... probably, Virginia's not on the top of your list. <laughs> so, so. We're, we're trying to stick within an hour or two driving at the moment. Right. but uh, Yeah, I think you know. Vinny's pretty much got the New York ones. And yeah. if I were going to, I would love to do it with them just because they were the inspiration mm -hmm. for my husband, Terry, and yeah. I. So. That, that'd be awesome. And then, I mean, you got Saratoga two hours away. Oh, and there's yeah. so many breweries there too, which, you know, knock on wood, things kind of stay the way they are right now. And mm -hmm. us Canadians can travel for a day, no problem right. or two. So that's, uh, that's, that's one of the beer cations I'd love to do. And before I ask you about your beer cation, tell me about Copper Nails. Copper Nails is an amber ale. It is my favorite and I'm biased. And uh, it, um, it's very smooth. Even if you are normally a light beer drinker, mm -hmm. even though it has a darker color, it is a lighter, smooth, um, be, you know, beer for a the darker amber yeah. color. So, awesome. Okay. Very, Oops. very um, uh, has a malty yeah. finish to it. So. Yeah, I, I I love malty beers. Yeah. So it's like malty beers, then juicy beers, then anything else. So. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, another like solid, super crushable. You know, I'm I'm a huge fan of maltiness, so that's that's me. Uh, but beer in general, if, if to me, if you're a beer drinker, you should be. You're supposed to have malt in your beer. So. Right. And this beer, mm. um, we are, we did make the list a while ago of um, the top five burger places. There nice. Were four in Vermont, and we were through the uh, television station. That goes fantastic with one of our burgers. Mm. Do you have a food and beer pairing program or it's just you kind of make suggestions whenever somebody orders? We make suggestions. Okay. Um, if someone comes in and they are um, really interested in a certain beer, mm -hmm. we will say it goes great with these different foods. Or if they're interested in a certain food, we will suggest a beer that makes it, you know, taste a, yeah, it makes the a food little pop. bit better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what, uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand about gastronomy nowadays is like, Beer can go with good food. You don't have to just have beer burgers and hot dogs right. and be drinking an MGD right. anymore. You can have a fantastic light lager and have the, I mean, your Reuben here, the first time I had it, I was like, oh my God, this is spectacular. Right. So. And even like our salmon or our fish and, mm -hmm. and different things like that, um, which you weren't having, but the um, light and maize, mm -hmm. which is a nice cream meal, goes very well with our fish and, and you know, different yeah. things like that. Awesome. Uh, as we were mentioning beer cations, so I like to add when you have time, because clearly owning a brewery takes time. Uh, and when it's a lot safer to travel and you're not, I'm personally uncomfortable in a plane right now, but that's me. Um, but when you're kind of comfortable and you have the time, a beer vacation you've never taken that you'd love to take. And it doesn't just have to be in America. It's like, oh, I want to go to Germany or I want to go to right. Australia. Like, 
Well, having been in the military and mm -hmm. stationed in Germany and traveled through Europe, um, I did get to go to different breweries. And it's interesting over there that many little towns, yeah. and you would just go, like we lived in this small town, you just go to the beer lady and it was bottled. It was not refrigerated, it was just kept in their basement and delicious. Wow. Um, but I would like to go back um, and go to some of the old monasteries in the rest where the original beers, you know, and those um, that you really can't even get here. Mm -hmm. um, did spend time in Ireland and of course went through the Guinness factory and learned the perfect pour, but uh, I think that the, the old monasteries is where I would like to go. Yeah, I've, I've said it before, since I look like a monk, I think I just fit right in. So. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Shaved head, beard, I could even grow out the sides if I need to. So, <laughs> um, I, I like to ask this because you are a, a woman in beer, it's, it's very rare. Uh, do you feel like the industry is starting to expand towards uh, people of color and women in the brewing industry here in the USA? I do. Okay. Um, I, I think, and I think it's a good thing, um, not only you know, as an owner and the, uh, you know, home brewing, yeah. um, I see more actual head brewers mm -hmm. um, that are not just, you know, white males. And that's, <laughs> and you know what? It's great because everybody's palate, um, I know I have a very different palate mm -hmm. than my sons or some of the, the males. So, I think it gives a good perspective if you do have a very diverse, um, you know, brewers, owners, mm -hmm. and then you have a very diverse palate. Yeah. No, I mean, the history of beer, women started beer. Like, if you look at any of the history of the beer, with the alewives and That's before right. that, in the Egyptian times and Mesopotamia, what women started with beer, like, why, why does everybody have to look like me? Yeah. <laughs> so, and it is scary how many people look like me who are <laughs> in this industry. Yeah. So. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, let's try this last beer, and then this we're gonna is wrap a, up. This is our new sour. It's a tropical sour. It's mm -hmm. very fresh, even for people who are not beer drinkers. That say like your seltzers or yeah. um, you know different mixed drink type thing. You will like this um, this sour. It's not the the type of sour that you traditionally think. It's ooh very sour yeah. in the rest. It is light. It is crisp and. Um, yeah, it's awesome. very good. Yeah. All right, toast. It's uh, it's pomegranate. It's got some pineapple. Pineapple. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm getting. That's yeah. That's that's. An, it's not like the sour. Bam. No, not at all. Um, mm. So it's another very... light, crushable to me summer beer. Yeah. Sitting on a patio, you know, we call them tacasas in Quebec, but sitting on a patio, this is something I would crush and, and have a nice light meal with. So. Yes. Awesome. Uh, what's next for the Valcor brand? Well, as I said, we are doing some collaboration further out mm -hmm. of this Northeast region. Um, and then uh, we are actually looking at, um, right now we only can distribute in New York. Um, if we decide to um, go outside of New York and get then mm -hmm. other distributors, um, that will probably be our next step. Um, right now, um, we're still baby stepping yeah. back from the pandemic. Um, don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. <laughs> yep. And, um, and like I said, we also are getting a big tent. We do host a lot of different events. Mm -hmm. So um, as you will see coming up, we will be expanding to have larger events, more outdoor live music. We're a harvest host provider now. So for people who are, you know, this is kind of on your way stay mm -hmm. um, to wherever you're going, and um, you can come here and stay. And we also have rooms. So yep. if, um, if it's more than you know, a night or two, or you feel you've had too much and uh, cost of a room's better mm -hmm. than the cost of a ticket, so. Or going to or prison worse, or, or yeah, lawyers so, or. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, uh, um, you know, we, we try to, uh, to accommodate and make Amazing. sure that, so. I, I love it, uh, the, the, your whole concept, like, like I said, I've been a fan since 2017. It's just, oh, unfortunately, you. I haven't been able to come here the last yeah, two years. So. so I look forward to your future here. I look forward to a long future here at, uh, at the old stone barracks. I will definitely be back at some point. 
Uh, anybody coming in from Montreal, guys, this is a place to come. And for those coming in from out of town, where can people find you? Um, we are off Route 9 um, in the old Plattsburgh Air Force Base. Um, and so basically 49 Ohio Road. And um, if you Google that, you should find us. But if you also look up Old Stone Barracks, you'll definitely find yes, us. Yes, for sure. So. And social media, where can people find you? Um, we are on Facebook. Then we have our website, Um also on Instagram. I'm not super great with Twitter, um, but um, we do have some of my children, because this is family-owned, that help with any of the, the different posts and the rest. But mainly, you'll find Facebook and Instagram. Spectacular. So all that's going to be in the show notes. As for us, allbeerinside.com is the website at All Beer Inside on all social media. And as I say at the end of all episodes, drink craft, not crap.